Hi everyone, Martin here from martinsmayhem.co.uk. I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of no line watercolouring. I had lots of questions in relation to this card, uh, which was shared on the Stamping Fancy Friday um, Instagram and Facebook. And because there was so many questions about how I approach the no, no line watercolouring, I think it's just easier if I do a quick video. Um, it's not a full, full tutorial though, um, so let's just put that over here. And I'm going to be using the Dainty Delight stamp set, which has these wonderful kind of hand-drawn imagery, which I think is just perfect for no line watercolour. So, let's get started. You're going to need a piece of watercolour paper, so this is Fluid 100, because that's what Stampin' Up! sells. I've already mounted my, image, uh, my stamp onto a block. And again, this is just like a quick demonstration. I'm not going to do a full tutorial. Um, I'm using Sahara Sand ink. I'm very sad that it's disappearing from our colour collection because it's perfect for this. However, I'm sure one of the other colours will fit in nicely. I've got a piece of... What's it called? Grid paper. And I'm going to need some tissue, so let me just grab a tissue as well. And put that over to one side. So I'm going to ink up my image. Like so. Just ink it up. And I'm going to stamp it off first. Like so. And then I'm going to stamp it on to our Fluid 100. Now, you're not going to get a perfect impression, and that's fine, because you just want to see a standard outline. Let me zoom in. So that you can kind of work out where the flowers need to be, etc, etc. Now, again, I am, well, I studied fine art, so technically I am a trained artist, but we won't go into that. Um, but yeah, this isn't something I'm particularly great at, or anything like that so please don't think like i preaching to the choir because i'm not uh, i am using four colors there i'm using fresh freesia evening evergreen crushed curry and cherry cobbler i'm just going to start with a cherry cobbler actually i'm going to move this card out of the way completely um just so i have enough room so you can see that i've already got a well of ink in the tray i'm going to grab the finest Oh, there you go. Um, watercolour painter. And this is empty because I've got a little pot here that I actually made. Um, just filled with water. And that's just so I can control the amount of water I have. And a piece of tissue just to dab off any excess. So then, once that's wet, I'm just going to pick up some ink. And then you're just going to work out where you want to start. What I would recommend is, if I bring in the card again, is where you have petals overlapping, do one, skip one, do one, skip one. So if we use this one as an example, I'm going to start at the base. And I'm just going to bring out that colour from the centre. Out. Like so. And fill it in. Now, if you're thinking it's too intense, pick up some water, put the water over the bit you want to make lighter and give it a little dab. And then if needs to be, you can work back in. Like so. Just to deepen that up. Like that. Grab a little bit of water just to smooth that line out but don't worry you can always come back i'm just tapping off my brush all the time so again i'm just going to pick up more ink i like to keep it quite loose for the first layer so you can see there i've gone one miss a petal going in for the second I'm filling that out. And then if I wanted to, I can just bring a little bit more depth at the base, like so. And now that's kind of that flower done. 
I could do, I can try this one. Let's just fill it out like so. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. And note, I'm adding the smallest amount of water. And then I'm just gonna move on to another flower. So let's do this centre one here. Like so. Pick up that ink and drop it in. And then let's do this one here. So it's about just making your way around. And if you need to use the image on the case as reference or your stamped off image, whatever you need. But equally, have fun with this. You can add elements, you can take elements away, you can go back in afterwards. There's nothing to say that if you're unhappy with something, you can't just pop back in and take something out. So there's that. I did the little flowers here in crushed curry. So let's just do this flower down here. So I'm just gonna lightly apply that. So this is quite watery at the moment. So let's just fill that area and then bring in some more ink. Like so. And I think with this technique, it's important to let go. You don't necessarily want full control of it. Like so, da da da. Let's try and do this one as well. What I would like to do as well is I try to keep it the colours that I'm dealing with at the time. So as I've done this one, I'll go on to do this one and then I'll go back and finish these ones a little bit more. So really there's no rules, it's just kind of making sense of the areas that you're colouring. And just taking your time. I think we rush through things so much that we sometimes forget just to sit back and enjoy the process. And this is one of the first cards I made. So I've been in a bad place recently um, with my mental health and... It's kind of been a little bit of a struggle to get back into things. Um, but this card really helped because I literally just sat there painting for a couple of hours. And it just helped me relax back into this. And that's no claim that crafting is good for your mental health because I'm not allowed to make that claim. Um, I'm just say, saying for me, um, as I have been struggling, it's been good just to spend some time without any care. So, because the other three petals are already dry, um, that there's natural difference between the petals. So even though the colours are touching each other, there's that slight difference. If you did want to kind of make the separation a little bit more now, so about just adding a little bit more darker colour in one area. Like so. And that would just help. So that's quite patchy, so let's just bring in some water and pad that out. This leaf down here is quite light, um, so I am going to go back into that now. And just add a little bit more 
in depth color, like so. And it's just about keep working through it. Like so, this one, I think I'm going to darken these edges rather than darken that centre one. And equally, kind of pad that out. Pad this one out now. Bring it down. And it's as simple as that, just following the lines of the patterns. So my top tips would be take your time. Complete one and then skip one, especially for flowers, where you're kind of overlapping certain areas. Start light. So as you can see here, you can start light and then go back in. Just add a little bit more intense colour, like so, and work that round. But equally, don't forget, you can always go back in with a little bit of darkness, just to help reform the shape so and then it's just a matter of blending a bit out a little bit of water so i'm going to say that's the red done or the cherry cobbler done and another tip would be use darker colors than what you want them to turn out as because these colors when like done with watercolor they lighten up so if you want them to stand out use deep colors which is why i went cherry cobbler evening evergreen and chris curry the one like false example of that is the fresh freesia but that's because I literally wanted something really subtle that I didn't want to take centre stage. So the best bit about using the Sahara sand is the fact that it just fades away when you apply the water and the ink it just disappears behind which is just lovely I'm just gonna kind of use individual petals the smaller the elements as well, the less work that it's going to need. Which is even better. Because once you've taken some time just to uh, a little bit more water, but not too much. Once you've taken the time to do the larger areas, the small ones are just nice, just to apply the ink and the water, but you can always go back in with a little bit stronger colour, just to help them stand out a little. Can anybody see any more flowers? that's it so let's just clean off our brush i'm gonna do uh evening evergreen next so this is where i struggled a little bit because i found our uh, paint brushes didn't go as fine 
as we necessarily need it because as you can see it is a lot of line work but again it's just about taking your time once that line's laid down if it's still water you can just drop in a piece of intense ink oh, there's a little bit there so i can drop that in like so and then with the leaves it's just about going natural so where the leaves are thicken out you can press down harder so you get a natural kind of line like so And with the leaves, I think it's really important to work in the foreground first and then go out. So here you can see we've got this line here, which is at the back. Now, because I've just done this leaf, I don't want to do that line next. I kind of want to leave that a little bit just so I can then ensure that line is clean. And again, it's hand painted, it's not going to be perfect. It's just about getting it down. Like so. And I haven't gone off now. So just keep working through. As you are. Like so, bringing it down. And what I did with the example is I ended up adding a couple of leaves in because I just found that they fit. So as you can see, I've just gone by this leaf and there's not enough shadow there. So I'm just going to add a little bit more intense ink either side. Just so then you can see that there's a difference. And then I'm just going to splodge off that. Pick up some more ink. Add it in. Like so. And the best bit is, is now that I've done this as kind of a demonstrational piece, I can actually use it on another card if I wanted to. So it might be you don't want to rush into kind of creating this. Oh, I've literally just bent that card. Oops. Um, you might just want to make a little practice piece first and work from there. Just picking up some more ink. And then... Bring that leaf in. Another line here. Bring that leaf in. Slowly just working up the image. And again, I'm not fussed about the different tones of the green to say. Because you know what? It's hand painted, as I keep saying. They should just be grateful you took the time to paint the card. I'm just going to bring in that leaf. Just going to bring in that line. And it's just about a matter of working your way through. Like so. 
And I'm being pretty quick because I'm obviously recording a video and you're all going to be bored. But I want you guys to see the full thing rather than just here's a section, you're done. A little bit more ink. I feel like that's fading a little bit. So this section up here is a little bit muddy, and that's because the Sahara sand clearly didn't stamp off very well in this section. But I can make it work. Just what I'll do is I'll lay down the ink in that section and then I'll just come back to it a little bit later on. Just to work it out. Bring that through. Bring in these lines. So I've just exaggerated that leaf a little bit, just so it has some bearing. And then I'm just going to bring in the little dots down here. Now I can't see these dots very well, so I'm just going to wing it. There's a leaf here, so I'm going to leave that leaf until a little bit later. Um, there's this line, which I'm just going to draw in. And again, it's just about taking your time. This one hasn't, doesn't look as good as I like. So let's just dab it off. And then we can go back in with a slightly dark line. Just to refine it a little bit. And hide our little boo boo. But equally, what I'm going to show you afterwards as well is going to kind of make all our hard work look a little bit pointless, but it adds a whole other element to your project, so that will be fun. So I'm going to lay that down, just apply a little bit more ink there. That's still a similar tone, so I'm just going to bring in some water and bring that colour down, like so. Just so then that leaf is a little bit more integrated. And now I'm nearly finished. I want some, that's quite wet. Intense ink, just for the little bit. I bring in the fresh freezer anywhere else. So I feel like I've missed a little leaf here or a petal. Let's just bring in cherry cobbler very quickly and paint that in.
I've just added that little bit there as well, just so it looks more centre. Clean it off. Am I still in shot? Yeah. Then bring in the fresh freezer. Now you're not gonna want hot. You want you're gonna want like no water because of how pale this colour is. But you're just gonna bring it in and paint it down like so. Pick up a little bit more. Just so it is on there, but it is rather dry. So there's that done. But what I did after it was dry was I'm gonna grab the wide brush and the Sahara sand, which I'm just going to ink up. And you're going to want this really wet. Because we're just going to tap over our image. Like so. Now, again, if it's getting too wet, tap it off. But this is going to give it kind of that blurred edge look, as well as that vintagey kind of watermark, which I quite liked from the example again it's just knowing the balance and getting it right because you don't want to distort your image too much because then it puts all your hard work to a loss really so that's the image covered just gonna pick some more up and you can see how wet I'm making it and just dab it down and going around that whole piece now. Just so then. It's done. And what I would be doing now is that's done, is you can work back into the image and just to refine any lines that you want to. So the fresh freezers kind of disappeared a little bit, like I thought it would because of how newly painted it was. Um, we've lost a little bit of area here. I'm just gonna bring back the Evening Evergreen and repaint this bit ever so slightly. But again, I'd wait until it was perfectly dry because as this is still a little bit wet, because it's just bleeding a little bit too much. But that is because I'm trying to rush for the sake of this video. And what I would do now is, I haven't got this ready, but I'm going to grab this, is use my Winsor Newton ink in the gold. Now this is just drawing ink, which I love, but I use it for all my splatters. Let me just... Grab that, pull this off. You can just see that in there how lovely this is. Just gonna use an old water painter, pick that up, 
and just flick that down over the image and it just helps create that vintagey vibe and I am going to turn this into a card later on because it's stinking cute. I'm going to pick that up, just pin this off like so and I'm going to zoom out so that I can bring in the card. So there you have my take on the no line watercolouring technique. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description bar below and I'll be sure to answer them. Otherwise, please head over to my website where a full product list is available as well as links to where you can purchase them via my online store. Every order helps me, keep, helps me to keep doing this, so it is highly appreciated. Other than that, love to you all. Bye.